This video will feature a gameplay critique, with commentary mixed in, at key moments. One of my viewers, Jiraki, will be playing as a spirit. As they progress through the match, I'll be awarding keys for exceptional moments. I see you picked Whispers this match. A decent perk on Spirit. It should allow you to find your first survivor quickly. That Bill made two mistakes here. Getting hit while dropping the pallet was the obvious one, but the not so obvious mistake was made right here. The killer shack, which contains both a strong pallet and window, was right in front of him, but he chose to run towards the street instead. If Bill had recognized that, he might have been able to avoid getting hit. Looks like you know how to fake your phase walk. Nice. I think you forgot you had barbecue and chili here. Phase walking immediately after a hook will rob you of its benefit, since you can't see survivor auras while using it. Hopefully you'll remember later in the game. There was no need to swing so early there. Pallets don't grow on bushes, you know? Ah! Looks like the scratch marks tripped you up. I think I know why though. It was right... here. The tall grass and bush made it look like the scratch marks had ended. So you thought Dwight had run back towards you. So you turned around, groping the air helplessly, looking for him. A better move would have been to peek around the fence for scratch marks, before assuming he tried to juke you. <laughs> that lunge range was insane. Next time I play Spirit, I'm definitely trying that out on. The survivors who finished that generator are now probably working on the one next to it. But you decided to turn back rather than patrol it. Hmm. Maybe you thought they were going to save Dwight and you'd pick up on their trail. That Wakazashi add-on is totally carrying you. Okay, this was a big mistake on your part. I can tell why you made it though. You saw Kate running to unhook Dwight and you wanted to stop her. But if you would just chase Claudette for a few more seconds, you could have downed her and then phase walked to the hook. I know, as killer, you have this attitude, but this isn't Pokemon. You can only catch one survivor at a time. When you try to catch more than one, you wind up catching none. <laughs> Alright, there are a lot of mistakes being made here, so it's going to take me a minute to explain. Many spirit players make these mistakes though, so don't feel too bad. Mistake number one, you tried to mind game the survivor almost immediately after ending phase walk. If the survivor you're chasing sees you end phase walk, they'll know your power is on cooldown. And if you try to mind game them during this time, they'll just run away from you while you stand there with your sword in your hands. Mistake number two, you don't have line of sight on the survivor. Kate could run in the direction you're facing right now, and you wouldn't see her because you position yourself poorly. Additionally, if you decided to phase walk right now, you'd have a harder time predicting where Kate is because you never saw her initial position. And mistake number three, you're too far from the pallet. If you're trying to trick a survivor into running to your side of the pallet, how do you expect to capitalize when it happens if you're not within lunge range?
foiled by scratch marks again, huh? Let's rewind and I'll show you a better play you could have made. So right here, you know Kate is running through the basement and is heading towards the opposite end of the school. So instead of following her downstairs, you could have cut her off by running down the hallway and either dropping through the hole in the floor or waiting at the stairwell. Pretty good job so far, right behavior? Seriously though, crossing the gap like that could be game breaking in some situations. I'll give you a key for showing us that one. Now that's just borderline broken. I like how you've shown the potential in Spirit's Wakazashi add-on during this match, so I'll give you a key for that one too. You're pretty lucky the survivors haven't cleansed your ruined totem yet. Although if they tried, they might cleanse your haunted ground totem by accident, which would be a nightmare for survivors playing against spirit. You had a little spaz attack there. You okay? Looks like Bill started walking as you were charging your power. You got played by an old man. <laughs> that was a mistake on Bill's part. He should have ran to the far end of the loop while your attack was on cooldown. Now this was a poor decision on your part. Yes, you saw a survivor in the house over there, but this was the worst possible generator you could have patrolled, due to how far away it is from the hook. There were three generators much closer to the hook you should have chosen. No reason to swing so early, or did you forget you broke the pal by the car earlier? Oh man, you outplayed yourself there. All I can say is, you're lucky your haunted ground totem popped, or that chase might have taken a lot longer. Now I want to point something out here. You decloaked at the tall grass because you failed to see the scratch marks beyond the cinder block. However, if Claudette had been in the tall grass, you would have been able to see it moving even during your phase walk. Aw, oh, what 
was that head nod for? Claudette didn't even try anything funny with you. Jeez, these survivors are like potatoes, and you're making hash browns out of them. There goes Potato Bill, ignoring a perfectly good palate. I don't blame you for thinking he was going to loop you there. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, you messed up there. As soon as you saw the scratch mark appear on the bushes, you should have known he changed direction. This Bill's a senile old fool. Ran through a house that had like four windows and a pallet upstairs he could have used against you. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this game, it's that you're way too eager waving your sword around. You've missed like six melee attacks this match and the survivors weren't even trying to juke you. I feel like you definitely could have caught the last survivor here, but you didn't check the most common spawn area for the hatch. It was obvious when you hooked Claudette that Kate was camping the hatch in the boiler room. Well, that looks like a wrap for this match. I think Jiraki showed a fair understanding of Spear's power and a solid understanding of Dead by Daylight's game mechanics. However, quite a few mistakes were made that they would definitely be punished for by more experienced players. Jiraki also had two key moments. The first one showing how killers can lunge across the gap in the preschool to ignore the pallet, and the second showcasing how powerful Spear's Wakazashi add-on is. So that's it for this gameplay critique. Thanks for watching! If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for future content.